you can speak. Hey Ryan, um, I just wanted to say I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I am I'm taking Devin in this fight. Just to be clear, mm-hmm. I am taking him. But um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Yeah. If Canelo and David Benavidez never fight, is that a duck on Canelo's side? You know, I don't want to really shoot shots at anybody right now. You know, um, I, look at what I have already fought Benavidez. Yes, but that's that's his own business. I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, put it put anybody down. That's not what I like to do. But um, yes, I would have already fought Benavides if I was him. Very cool. And then yeah. my other question is: After Devin, if you're successful against Devin, who would you ideally want to fight next? If it was completely up to you, to you, who would you like to fight next? First thing that comes to mind is Teofimo. Sex, second thing is me fighting uh, Sean O'Malley uh, in MMA. How do you think that that would go if you fought Sean? I would. I would beat him. I'm going to keep it simple. I would beat him. What did you think of his? What did you think of his performance last night against um? Uh, Chito. Chito. He he yeah. did all right. You know, I mean, it it was nice. It was good work. You know, fighting a, uh, let's say aggressor. But let's see what Sean O'Malley can do coming forward. We never see him do that. But uh, okay, Krista, I'm gonna go to my friend uh, Patriot. Patriot. Hold, hold on, What's hold up? on, real quick. Yeah. What's up, brother? What's um, up? give me give me one second. I'm trying to get myself together over here. You go to the next person. I'm coming right back. Okay, no worries, Kenny. You you can talk. Yeah, what's up, Ryan? Yeah, Yo, sure. just a quick question, bro. Just for you personally, like in a in a sport where I feel like the best stuck the best. Why why do you keep taking like the hardest fights on the road? Like, is there a reason you're doing it? Is it for legacy? Like, w- w- what's up with that, bro? I mean, w- w- hasn't the sport suffered enough? Think about it. You know, um, as many times as people complain that nobody's fighting anybody, <laughs> look at me. I'm fighting everybody, and everybody's still complaining. So I'm just showing people that, you know, when you give them what they want. It's always a problem, but look it. My whole thing is, I came into the sport to bring back the feeling I would get when I would watch a Floyd Mayweather fight, Oscar De La Hoya fight, or, or a fight that just made you excited before that that bell rang. And I didn't know how I was gonna go down, but I knew that if I just listen to the people and just understand and give them what they want, you know, no matter what. You know, I'm doing things for me. I remember a story when my mom, you know, I was in the amateurs. My mom goes, why don't you just go in the lower weight class to avoid X, Y, and Z? I said, why would I do that? I want to fight the best. And I stayed in the toughest weight class and I became a national champion in that weight class. So that just carried on to where I'm at now. Yeah, you're a legend, brother. Keep working, man. Everybody's talking too loud in the background. Okay, Amber, you, you, you can talk. I don't have my hand up, but I'll ask you. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I thought you fine. did. I'll, I'll ask you a question. Um, okay. So you said that you want to fight in MMA, but you put out a tweet yesterday saying that um, like MMA fighters shouldn't cross over into boxing. Yes. What makes you think that you can cross over into MMA? Well, because it's very unfair for M- MMA fighters to come to boxing, as you, we've, we've proven it over and over again. But I think that there's a chance if somebody took it serious, right? Um, a little example is Clifton Shields. She's kind of making noise, and I think it's PFL MMA. But for me, I think because um, of my determination and my natural ability to catch on to things, and people don't know I've been wrestling for a long time, for years now, and I'm I'm doing really well. So if I put my mind to it, I'm talking about, look at three months of str- rigorous training, rigorous, I can't even say that word, but you know what I'm trying to mean. And if I if I dedicate myself nonstop to MMA, I think I could pull it off. Now, look at people call that crazy. They call Deion Sanders crazy when he went from basketball to base. Oh no, it was football to, to baseball. So maybe I could do it. Why not? I think it's just like some form of like healthy delusion, like your mindset, your mentality would help you get there rather than anything it's, else. It's only delusion if, if I can't, you know, if I don't do it, you know, it's delu- like, like, how could it be delusion if I really pull it off? You know what I mean? Like, I guess you could say healthy delusion uh, if you want to call me delusion. Just in the, se- just in the sense yeah. of like delusion, like in terms of healthy delusion in terms of like. There's been reason. boxers who have, who, Holly yeah. Holm was at a boxer and she became um, uh, the world champion in the UFC. Well, there you go. So it's not far fetched. I think people probably because they, I don't know, maybe it's striking. The striking, um, what's up, Ryan? I'm back. The yeah, yeah, striking, yeah. the, the strike, what, what, what he's saying, what Ryan's saying is, um, the striking is different in boxing and MMA. Like Floyd, when Floyd got in the ring with Conor McGregor, it, it's a big difference from when McGregor was hitting Floyd and Floyd was hitting McGregor. Like we strictly in boxing just work on the, the, the striking, the punches. Yes, so yes. when Ryan, when Ryan throw a hook, it's different from when somebody from MMA throw a hook. You know what I'm it's saying? True. That's the smaller way to put it. And and because look at they have to worry about 
let's say, look at they have to worry about kicks, et cetera, takedowns. So they can't deliver the type of punches we can. We, we're fully confident you ain't going to kick me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we could transfer all of our energy into that punch. Yeah, I will say Sean O'Malley is pretty good at striking, but so was Conor McGregor. <laughs> and then when he got in the ring, uh, they weren't they weren't too powerful. Yeah, right. Think about this. If you can if you can dodge, if we're slipping punches, right? If you could dodge a punch, you could see a kick coming a mile away. That's nah. what I'm trying to tell people. I, I I've had people try to kick me before. All they do is pick my hand up, block, block. I, okay, they say calf kicks. Okay, well let me learn how to check. It can't be that. I mean, it could be hard, but people that have trained in MMA all the whole time still can't check a kick all the time. Sometimes you got to just take that bitch. I'm sorry, excuse my language. Sometimes you got to take it. And and it is what it is. <laughs> my bad, guy. But it's hilarious. Um, you know, can I learn how to check a kick? Yes. Can I learn how to sprawl? I already know how to do that. Can I learn how to defend submissions? I'm pretty sure I can. So to me, it's not far-fetched. But the punching is definitely different. Like if you're trying to kick somebody, we can catch your kick. Once we catch your kick, you don't want to feel one of these straight rights to left hooks from a boxer and know what they're doing. Hey, bro, with six ounce gloves, I don't think you want to feel. I mean, I mean, that's I mean, or whatever, four ounce gloves. A hey, young D Lo, you, you, you can, you can speak. I can speak. Yeah, of course, bro. All right, all right, Ryan. I'm gonna ask you like a a weird question, but like you gotta like listen to it. You feel me? Okay. All right. <laughs> did Did you lose against Tank, or did like Tank win? Did I lose against Tank, or did Tank win? I think those both are true. It's a true nah, question. Nah, nah, you gotta like listen to it. Like, okay, see? all right, go. Did I already I said it. Okay, did I lose against Tank or did Tank win? You, you know what? You gotta like think. Dumbest question I've ever heard in my life. Bro, bro, I, I bro, think he gets the question, bro, bro. Somebody help me here, bro. Just, let Nigga, just, think, just think, bro. You're not thinking, bro. Nigga, bro I was trying to question. think, bro. You got me. You got yeah, me. Let him answer it. Nigga. He gets the question. Let, let, take your time, bro. I, I am. It's like a riddle. Well, I, I mean, like yeah, I, would saying, say, like, I would say it, tank one because you don't lose. That, that, that's a good mentality. All right, hop off his meat, bro. Oh my but God. I'm just saying, like, if, that, if that's a fucking question, like, you would take that option, surely. You don't want to call him straight. But Ryan beats him at 140, you know. Uh, yeah. Yes, for sure. So if that's the question you're saying, yes, tank one because he won in negotiations. Oh, I come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm being real, bro. Look at, look at, at the end of the day, everything I said is facts. If it wasn't, got, you, it wouldn't be so. Look, at, am, am I man enough to say I signed the contract? Of course. Am I, but I'm also going to be man enough to say that was some stuff that a major, I say 99% of boxers won't take. So, And I didn't need to take that those clauses in my position. I had money. I had everything. What I, what I didn't have was the trust of the people that I was going to go in there and, and, and get in the ring amidst, amidst all the things that they put against me. Now, if you guys could get in the ring dehydrated and almost on the verge of basically dying then you could speak on how i felt in the ring at the end of the day i know what i was up against i i did it for boxing i i sacrificed my well-being so the sport could propel and you see after that Errol spence crawford got in the ring and many other people started getting in the ring and fighting each other so say what you want i went and changed uh i changed the sport on how i felt it needed to be changed but now boxing, I'm good. boxing is about politics that's what they gotta understand a lot of people don't understand the business aspect of boxing before you can actually critique somebody for losing, you do have to look into the contracts that they sign. If you dehydrated, if you ever been dehydrated before, you're weak as hell. Look at Earl Spence. Earl yeah. Spence is dehydrated. Think fine. If, 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 all right, I challenge anybody to be dehydrated and, and just try to play some basketball. <laughs> Just try to play some basketball, let alone being in the ring of, uh, in front of millions of people with pressure all around you. <laughs> like, come on. You can't even study for your test dehydrated. Don't even get on me about nothing. Wait, Ryan, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, right. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but, like, uh, if we can uh, – low-key, if we get one more co-host, we can get uh, one, like, extra slot in. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, just get – get, I got uh, you. Yeah, I get – I uh, got you. I got you, yeah, actually. I got you, bro. I give it to Wayne, honestly. He's your biggest fan. Number yeah. one. Supporter. Wayne is Jake Paul's biggest fan. I, hey, Wayne, can you speak? Hey, what's up? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Tell me about Jake Paul. Come on, bro. All right. Let me tell you a little about Jake Paul. You know, that's my nigga, you know? I love you. <laughs> I already look, know, bro. I watch I fuck with you, too. You know, look, like, I had you beating the shit out of Tank. You know, fortunately, you know, you, you were injured. You know, shit happens. You know, you're going to get him at 140. Right. But, you know, I want to ask you a quick question, though. Um, do you think... We can get this dream fight, you versus Loma. Oh yeah, we could always run that. You know, um, I would love to fight Loma. I mean, look at if I fought Tank, I'll fight Loma. I mean, that's not a problem for me. Um, I would love that. 
Um, I really want to know. I already know who you have for this fight, but who do you think is going to win, Jake Paul or Mike Tyson? Oh, Jake Paul. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, who, bro, who you I got? bet Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is is huge, bro. There's no way Jake Paul is taking this, bro. Yeah, I, Jake I Paul's not going to knock him out, but I got Jake Paul winning by, you know, split decision, you know? Oh, shit. Wayne, I, I want to see your live reaction when Jake Paul gets knocked out. I just want to look. I I need to see whoa, it, bro. Can you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you What's record your hate yourself? Him, though? What's your hate I don't have him? no hate, bro. My problem is he's make. I've let it go too long. He's making a mockery of boxing. He's stealing mockery. so much money out of these kids that really put in. And what I'll give him credit to, he is supporting a lot of fighters. I have respect for him. I've known him for years. For years. Yeah. Who do you think he went to his? Ask him whose house did he go in Victorville to to see how to box? Ask him that. You, you, you did help him, you know. Like, no, I started him off. Who do you think took him to Canelo's gym? Me. Okay. Yeah. I, bro, I'm the one that started his career. Little did you know. I'm the one that gave him the idea that he could have he could do this and change and, and make money off it. I'm the one who did it. Why do you think I'm the one that said, why, wow, dang, I don't feel like I should have done this. But again, I'm not trying to knock no other man's hustle down. Let him do what he got to do. But yeah. one day he has to see me, Wayne, and then you got to pick who you're going to go for. And I already know who you're going to go for. But when I beat him, just say you're my – now, Ryan, you're my favorite fighter. That's all I got to hear. Hey, check this out, though. Take it, Wayne, real quick, real quick, Wayne. I want to give I want to give props to Jake Paul because I'm not going to knock him. Like, he 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 he's not – like, he he's pretty good, you know, for a new person doing it three years. But what I'm saying is – you like Mike Tyson, bro. Like he still is a monster. Like don't you don't step in the ring with something like that when you're a beginner. The only way Jake Paul wins this fight is if they have it already coordinated for him to win. That's it. That that's the only way. And has that happened in the sport before? Yeah. But, but what do you think about Mike Tyson's stamina at this age? If it goes well, past two rounds, I don't see how he wins. Uh, Mike Tyson. I mean, he went he went a couple rounds with Roy. How many? That was like eight rounds, right? Okay, so, uh, I mean, I think he only needs four to beat Jake Paul. But, you know, I don't even think he needs four. I think if Mike hits him one good one, it's over. But that's just me. I've, I've met Mike. Mike is, is a different breed, bro. When he stepped in the room, you're like, all right, now I know why people were scared. Mm, fair, fair. Ryan, Ryan, what do you think of the um the Saudi cards? Do you do you like the events that they're putting on? Do you think that it's good? Do you think it like helps the sport as a whole grow, or do you think it's a negative? I think it's a positive. I don't mind it. You know, as long as it's at the right time. Like the timing situation is what throws me off. Like, you know, I think most boxing is consumed in the U.S. market, if I, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, to me, it's like uh, I wish it was out here. But again, I don't mind it. I mean. Early fights, okay, cool, but I don't think it reaches as much eyes as it can. I think the fight, this last fight with Anthony De Joshua Nagano, I think that was a success, and I think that's cool. Hey, uh, before we go to hands, I got a quick question. Uh, two quick questions, actually. Yeah. Who you got, Frank or Tank? I'm gonna go on the limb. I'm saying Frank. Because I've been talking to Frank, and I've been telling him all the moves. And I've been in the ring with, with, with Tank, and I'm not saying I got no blueprint. I ain't saying nothing. I just see – I know what I know. In the ring, I've seen some things, and I'm just giving Frank game. Now, whatever Frank does is what Frank's going to do, and Frank deserves all the credit. And I really believe Frank can pull this off, and I'm pulling for him. And um, don't be surprised if Frank wins is what I'm going to say. Yeah, 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 I got Frank going in by KO. And then my second question is, like, what's your thoughts on, like, Roly, like, defending you and shit? You know, like... Uh, you know, Roly, Ro Ro Roly low-key has a good heart. He just, like, he loves to sell fights, and he doesn't care how he does it. So I don't knock him on that. But um, he does have a good heart. I mean, I I've talked to him many times, and he's went through some struggles, and I've been there and be like, yo, what's up? And, uh, yeah. He's cool, but uh, he should have took that fight with me. I mean, that he should have took that fight. But, you know, let God's will be done, not mine. Wait, why did for he sure. not take you? Like, what was the reasoning? Politics, brother. I'm not going to get into it. Politics. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. You can go ahead, Ezra. Uh, yo, Ryan, can you hear me, brother? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. It's kind of good you talking to you, bro, because you're up there as, like, my favorite boxer currently. Up there with Devin Haney, which is crazy. Because it's two monster boxers fighting. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the question to you, brother, is what is a dream fight for you? And the second question would be, I know Chris had talked about Saudi Arabia. Would you ever fight Saudi Arabia? I think the fight for me, and because they go hand-to-hand -to -hand together, some things come in confirmation. Here's a confirmation. Boom, dream fight, Manny Pacquiao. Where could that happen? In Saudi Arabia. So that's my dream fight, and I'm prophesizing that it's going to happen. 
Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. Wait, wasn't that supposed to happen like two years yep. ago? There's a post yep. made and everything. Yep, it was supposed to happen. We're, we're, there was actually talks that it could still happen. Remember, there was an article article that came out that Manny Pacquiao is willing to come out of retirement for Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, or Conor McGregor, I believe. Was it, is he fighting Conor Ben? I think he might. I mean, that might be the move, but, um, you know, I I think our fight is bigger. That's boring. But, uh, Ryan, Ryan's bigger. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Wait, can we go to Ryan? His hand's been up for yeah. a Yo, Ryan, I got two questions. Okay. So... As someone as mentally strong as you, how would you say go with dealing with mental like all the mental battles on such a yeah. grand scope? How would you say you would have to deal with these stuff? And how do you fare with dealing with it? Well, first comes God. Second comes the wisdom given by God. So what God has shown me at times was to develop a stoic mindset. So some things are in your control. Some things aren't like if I say monkey. Majority of people are, have thought of a little bit of a monkey in their mind, just a little bit. That's out of your control. So you let that go. So you start discovering things in your brain that are out of your control, emotions that are out of your control. When you see a sad movie, sometimes it's nothing that's out of your control to be sad. So when I was going through anxiety, um, depression, and OCD thoughts, so many things, when it would come, I would say, well, did I have control over that thought? No, I didn't. So let me let it flow. And do I even have control of this feeling right now? No, I don't. So let it go. What do I have control over? Okay, at this point, I can go on a run. So I would go on a run. And as I would go on the run, I would develop just that consciousness of understanding my thoughts and how to co compartmentalize them and understanding what was in my control, what was it? And then developing that, I gained peace over my anxiety, over my depression, over my OCD, over all the things that challenged me and tried to get in the way of God's will. Uh, I knew what was happening. God was making me stronger so that I could ha help maybe somebody that needs it or, or whatever. God gives you trials so that you lack nothing. So that's exactly what I had to go through. And now look, I'm in a stronger place and I understand, I understand things at a more higher level i appreciate that my second question is how are you doing mentally going into the devon haiti fight amazing you know this is the best place i've been mentally it's the most in shape i've been you know uh, contrary to what people believe i've been training of course. i've been training actually since january 1st i've never stopped training since my fight with duarte i believe that was on december 2nd and uh never stopped i never stopped training um i never no it wasn't december 2nd what date was it exactly was it December 2nd? Okay. So I never stopped training. I never stopped, you know, for a moment, you know, all the training I was doing, ask Derek, ask everybody. We were lifting weights. We never took a day off. Did we travel a lot? Yes. But do we always put in the work? Yes. If I did drink, it was after I worked out through the whole day. I would have a couple of drinks and wake up and do it again. So I, even though I was in the off time, I was training. So it, it, it I just... I've been calculating a long time, and now I feel so good. I sparred yesterday, looked amazing, strong, and I'm on point. This is the best I'm going to be in. Uh, you know, uh, I can't wait for you guys to see 420, baby. Yeah, and, and Ryan, well, I, just, I want to uh, follow up with one other question too, right? Um, what what kind of keeps you motivated till now? You know what I mean? Right now, it's just um, the purpose that God has for my life and, um, and just going with it, you know, knowing the people are finally hearing the truth. And um, I just want to keep going, bro. I don't I don't like how everybody was getting away with the things that they were doing across the world and the things I had to see and witness that that keeps me going. Those children keep me going. Those children motivate me. The children hurting the cries, all that that keeps me going. When I fight, when I when I'm in the ring, I see that. I see the person. I just, you know how my, Michael Jordan used to imagine scenarios? Well, I'm imagining those kids crying, and I'm, I, I come in with ferociousness. That's why I make all my spar sparring partners sign waivers, because I'm coming different. Yo, Ryan, real quick, I just wanted to say something real quick, real quick, Patriot. Um, I want, it's, it's a couple people I did want, they really want to talk to you. I got my brother, Michael Corey, up here. I got my brother, the Black Wolf, and then I got my sister, MV. If we okay. could just get them three in, brother, that would be nice. Thank you. Of course, of course. But yeah, that's what motivates me. Also, dude, I'm getting a lot of messages about requests and stuff like that. It's being mad glitchy. I apologize. Oh, I just want okay. to throw it out there. Yeah. Yo, Ryan, I got a question, bro. Yeah. So, I know after the Francis and Ganu fight, it ha okay, what happened happened. Um, in the press con in the post fight press conference, he said something that, like, uh, in regards to like he woke up that day and he kind of felt different. He kind of felt like he was almost gonna like he was almost felt like he it wasn't his fight to win. Uh, mm -hmm. when you fought Javante, is that is, just be feeling sometimes or like, oh, do you oh yeah, Javante yeah, 
I knew I knew exactly I was going to lose. I knew why I was going to lose. And I also knew that just trusting God. Why do you think I came out with the song Oceans? Because take me deeper in waters. You make my trust even deeper, basically, is what the song says. But you did hurt him, though. You did, you did oh, hurt yeah. him, though. Don't yeah, I saw wrong. you hurt him, though. Don't, 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 don't sleep on that. You you hurt him in the first round, though. Let's not act like we didn't see that, you know. And but I like both of y'all. I like you in a tank, but you hurt him in the first round. Like I said, we all saw that one. So you, you could have very well came out in that fight on top. I almost pulled it off in the second round. I almost pulled it off. When I heard him, and he was running to hold me, and, and he, he had the most scared face I've ever seen in my life. And he didn't even try to pretend to hug me he ran to me and almost grabbed my knees and then on top of that he told me word for word if i drop you like luke campbell i'm gonna go i'm gonna go i'm gonna go stop you like you could go look back in his interviews he said if i hit you with that shot you're not getting up one i got up and one he never he didn't take a step forward when he dropped me you notice that because he knew what it was he knows what it is 140 let's run it i don't got to say anymore javante come see me 140 let's do it straight up no rehydration clause none of it when I beat Devin Haney, I'm ready to run it with you right after that. Uh, Ryan, I, I just got a quick question. Um, hopefully, you, you do beat Devin Haney. We're all rooting for you to beat Devin Haney because yeah. he's kind of annoying in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But um, if you do beat Devin Haney, what are your plans next? And a second part, when you finish answering that question, what do you think of Terrence Crawford going in against Chris Eubank instead of John Bruce Ennis? Can all. you repeat your first question? What, do you, what is your plans after you beat David Devin Haney? Oh, my plans, um, I, I I touched on it. I, I would love to fight Teofimo Lopez if I can't get that. Because he, he likes to outbid himself. He likes to, like, say that he's, you know, more, he's worth more than he is. And I'm not trying to de demean him. I'm just looking at the business aspect of it. He he kind of prices himself out every time. That's why he doesn't get a big fight. But um, if I can't get him, I would love to fight Sean O'Malley in the MMA. If I can't get that, who else is out there? I mean, anybody, bro. I mean, I would love the tank rematch if I could get that next. You know, um, would love that. And uh, your second question was something about Terrence Crawford fighting Canelo, correct? Oh, uh, no. Chris Eubank instead of Boots. Oh. Well, how do you feel about that? Uh, I, I think Boots needs a little bit, you know, more wins under his belt. You know, because Terrence has already done it all. He's looking for big money, bro. He's not looking for anything else. He's looking for big money. That's it. I mean, that's all you can put it as, bro. He's looking for big money. Terrence already got the undisputed bouts many times. He's done what he had to do. He's probably looking to fight Canelo for some big money. Right now, he's in the position to, like, I'm done fighting for legacy. I'm, now it's time for money. Yeah, but Earl, one, one thing, I'm, I'm interested in seeing a rematch with Terrence Crawford and Earl yeah. if it ever happens because he wasn't – we all know that Earl wasn't really – like, that wasn't Earl. Like, right. I, I got – we got to run that back. Mm -hmm. I would love hey, that to happen. Yeah. Hey Ryan, who you got, Rolly or um, or the um, Chihuahua Pitbull? Uh, I don't even care about that fight. You know, they both did me dirty. I don't even want to give them no, no, no clout like that. Like they did me dirty. They swept it under the rug on the last minute on me. Literally hours before, they literally told me the fight was going on, and and they word for word gave me their word. So, at the end of the day, uh, I felt like that was the most disrespectful thing that's happened to me in my career and um we just move forward i'm gonna take three more questions and then i'm out all right look, hold on hold on let's go to let's go to, uh let's go to uh black wolf first right. and if we can get if we can get him a v up here real quick mvv can you request the mic please and then we got michael Corey. can we do that okay yo what's going on ryan and uh shout out to you for your big fight coming up man uh well, you, my brother. biggest question bro is what's the biggest reason and what is your intent behind the comments that you have been saying on uh, social media lately with the uh, bohemian grove conspiracy uh there, were, there was no intent about it i mean it's real it's it's happening and um you know for me it's like there's so many eyes on me right at this moment and uh, i'm gonna shine light on the things that are actually happening the things that i've witnessed in hollywood and um you know little kids are getting trafficked um they're getting auctioned off and they're going to islands and they're you know they're part of these weird you know weird packs where they're blackmailing rings where you know they'll, they'll do horrible things to these little kids and then they'll they'll come together and just basically saying if you snitch i'm gonna snitch so we're together and we're rich so let's never snitch on each other because of this bond we have so yeah i'm tired of it and i went to expose the truth and i don't care hey shout out to you for that man i want to stand with you on that fight and my, my second question was how do you balance your online fame and popularity with your boxing career and personal life just make sure i'm training hard Make sure I'm getting the work done, making sure I'm sharp and sparring, looking at the truth. And that's it. You know, um, I don't try to overcomplicate it.
if I have time to talk, I talk. If I don't, I don't have time to talk. There ain't nothing else to it. You know, if I got to put in the work and I can't hop on IG and talk to the people, then it is what it is. If I think I need space away from it, I will. If I feel like I'm straight, I'm straight. That's